Section 6.2, Quantized Energy and Photons. So, some phenomena can't be explained using a wave model of light. A wave model of light made perfect sense for so many things, but there were still some mysteries um, around the year 1900 that, that still were perplexing a lot of, of scientists. One was called black body radiation, which is nothing more than the fact when you heat something, it'll glow. So if you heat metal up very, very hot, it'll turn red or it'll turn another color or it'll turn white. So that's called black body. Um, wave, just because light's a wave, that didn't explain that at all. The other thing was kind of interesting. It's called the photoelectric effect. If you were to have a very shiny metal and you shine light on it, if the light is of a certain frequency, then that metal emits electrons. So it's, you can actually make a circuit with these electrons and use them almost like a battery. And in fact, you do. Solar-powered calculators use this all the time and photocells and um, you know, photoelectricity. The other thing that was weird was emission spectra, which every particular element, if you were to look at it through, it, through its gas, like heat it up towards a gas and then look through it uh, and separate the frequencies um, with, a, with a spectrometer where you're looking at the different frequencies that it's emitting, you'll see that each particular element is essentially making its own little fingerprint. It's not just, doesn't look like a rainbow, it will look like a big black line or a big black smear with various little tiny lines of bright color. So there might be one color of red and one color of orange at a certain frequency and one color of blue. And every single material makes its own fingerprint. And because, it hap because light is a wave, that, explain that didn't explain it at all. So let's look at a couple of these today. We're going to look at first black body, which is hot objects, and then we'll look at the photoelectric effect. The uh, scientist who kind of came to the rescue uh, was a German physicist named Max Planck, and he investigated black body radiation, and he proposed that energy can only be absorbed or released from atoms in little discrete amounts, like little chunks um, or little packets or bullets, and he called it a quanta. A quanta would just mean like a quantity, a certain amount. And a quantum is the smallest amount of energy that can be emitted or absorbed as electro electromagnetic radiation. So instead of just a constant, a constant uh, like rainbow that's all coming down at the same time, he kind of envisioned light as little pellets. Uh, coming down with each of it has a certain amount of energy and if there was less energy than this than a baseline then it would not absorb or emit but if you had sufficient energy then it could be absorbed or could be emitted so it was almost like uh, a, a bubblegum machine and the bubblegum costs a quarter and you don't have a quarter so it doesn't matter that you have three dimes and two pennies. You're not going to get any bubble gum. There is a required amount of energy required for a photon to hit something and then that would absorb the photon or emit a photon. So the sun is not going to emit a photon less than a certain amount. And then it's not going, then uh, substance is not going to absorb that photon unless it's a certain amount. So he proposed that light was a little bit differently than it was thought before. It was a discrete little packet called a quantum. And then he gave a proposal that that the energy of light was proportional to its to its frequency. So E is proportional to to nu, but also multiplied by this constant by a proportionality constant. So it almost like forced it to be in little um, steps. So it's called uh, Planck's constant, which Planck's constant is 6.26 times 10 to the minus 34 joule seconds. So energy was going to equal h nu. So H nu, H is, is this constant, 
and nu is the frequency. So for instance, look at the picture here, and in the next slide, I've got a steel plant here, and you're gonna see that there's different colors based upon the different temperatures of the materials. So you can see inside the middle, it's a brighter color, and that's the hottest of the metal. The cooler would be these lower uh, red or orange or colors on the side. The cooler the material, the less frequency that it's going to have. And that frequency is based upon its color. So you have red hot, and then you would get hotter, and it would be orange, and then yellow. And you can actually have other colors, greens and blue hot. Uh, so all of these colors are indicators that you have a frequency involved in the amount of energy and that it's red until it's orange. It doesn't become half red, half orange. It's red and then it has sufficient energy to turn orange and then it has sufficient energy to turn yellow. That's what Max Planck was talking about. He said there's kind of like steps. It's like stair steps. So if you go up a ramp, all of your potential energy is just kind of uniform, continually raising up. But if you go up steps or go up a ladder, I, I like the idea of a ladder better. If you're going up a ladder, you're either on the floor or you're on the first rung or you're on the second rung. You're never in between. That's a quanta. You're either this far up or you're this far up or you're this far up. You're never in between those le levels. So think of a piano. You, the notes are going up by steps rather than a smeary trombone that can go from low to high all at once in a smear. So a, a quantum is a, is a chunk uh, that can go up, 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 up in a quantitized way. One of the coolest things that show that light is not just a wave but it's also a particle is the photoelectric effect. And this is how Albert Einstein got his Nobel Prize, in case you were wondering. Everybody knew he was smart, but one of his first papers that was really impressive was that he explained, and he used Max Planck's constant in order to explain this. That's why it's so important. He People had noticed earlier that a shiny metal surface can emit electrons if it's shined upon by light. And, but the light wasn't always consistent. Like if you, if you would shine red light, for instance, on a certain metal, cesium or whatever kind of metal it is, um, nothing would happen. Even if you really made it really intense, like a, like a laser, it still wouldn't do anything. Then if you made it up a little bit, so for instance, maybe not red light, but green light or yellow light, maybe not orange, but yellow, like a certain frequency to where it was higher energy. Suddenly, you shine a little bit of light on it, and that metal starts emitting electrons. And if you shine it on in concentration, so you say have a higher color like yellow or green uh, laser, well, suddenly it's spitting out electrons like fat, like wildfire. So the higher the frequency... It'll spit out electrons. The lower the frequency, like red, for instance, or, or um, even under red, infrared, wouldn't spit out electrons. And that, that mystified people. And it, it made sense to Einstein that if light was actually little chunks and you had to have a certain amount of money to get the gumball, then red light was like having a dime and not a quarter. You didn't have enough energy. It was energy, but it wasn't enough money to pay for the gum. Okay, so he used this this um, Max Planck's constant H, uh, H nu, and he said that if you had sufficient energy, it would start spitting out electrons, and then if you increase the intensity, you increase the amplitude of that light energy, it will spit, spit out even more. And his really cool idea, and this is pretty cool, is let's say it costs a quarter for this electron that's in the metal to be excited enough to jump out. Okay, let's say it costs 25 cents. All right, and I give it an energy of, four, of 35 cents. So I put 35 cents in. And let's say I put 35 cents in. It takes 25 cents to spit it out. 
the speed or the kinetic energy, okay, the energy sub k, the kinetic energy is going to equal the other 10 cents. So the speed that it's spitting out with will be the leftover energy it took after you paid the amount to spit it out the first place. So you had to give it enough, of, you have to give the electron enough energy to escape. And then if you give it just enough energy to escape, it just kind of moves really slowly out because it didn't have any energy left over. But if you give it enough energy to escape plus more energy, then that more energy will be equal to or proportional to the kinetic energy that it's flying out with. So if I give it, uh, say, a little bit of energy, it might fly out red. If I give it more energy, it might fly out blue. It's that idea that it's flying out with, with kinetic energy equal to the leftover energy after that minimum quanta that Planck was talking about. So this brings us to the very useful thing, and that's that if you know the wavelength of light, if you know, if you know lambda, if you know its wavelength, and you know that speed of light is constant, well then you know its frequency. And if you then, if you know its frequency, because max uh, constant is always the same, now you know the energy. So you can take these two formula, and if you're given the wavelength, you know the energy that that light contains. Or if you know the energy of light, you could figure out what color it's going to be. So how much energy is blue? How much energy is ultraviolet? All of this is now relatable, and you can explain things better.